Watch the Mega Millions Drawing Live tonight here on TV23. Covering the high plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Simplet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. You know what? It is Tuesday, May 17th, 2016. Welcome to the Real High Plains Today on TV23. Hey, on today's show, I'm going to be joined by the Seward County Clerk and Head Election Official, Stacia Long. We're going to talk about upcoming voter registrations and everything that you can do to get registered, vote, et cetera, et cetera, because that time is approaching. In the meantime, let's take a look at some happenings. Well, the Finney County Sheriff's Office has arrested two Garden City men. They say were involved in the fatal shooting of a 22-year-old man Sunday afternoon southeast of the city. According to the Finney County Sheriff's Office, Richard Lyons of Garden City was shot at about 3 p.m. Sunday in a parked vehicle near the 5800 block of Mansfield Road. Now, Sheriff's deputies arrested 19-year-old Felix Sanchez and 20-year-old Rodolfo Garcia Sunday night on allegations of first-degree murder. Now, they both had their first court appearances yesterday morning, and their bail amounts were set at $800,000. Three teenagers from a Kansas military school were killed and another was injured when their pickup crashed in the foothills outside of Denver, Colorado. Now, 18-year-old Jake Whitting of Glenhead, New York, 19-year-old John Yoder of Denver, and 16-year-old A.J. Ricketts of Nigeria died after Colorado State Patrol investigators say Whitting lost control, went off the road, and crashed into a creek south of Conifer last week. Now, a fourth cadet, 17-year-old Marshall Otter, from Ulysses was hospitalized with serious injuries. Whitting had just graduated from St. John's Military School in Salina on Saturday as class valedictorian, and the others are current students. And at approximately 6.45 p.m. on Friday, the Liberal Fire Department was dispatched to 1211 Mission Boulevard for a structure fire. Now, Liberal Fire Department Chief Kelly Kirk said the fire was rather advanced and had begun in the basement. It had burned for an unknown amount of time before the occupants came home. By the time the fire department got the fire under control, the floor was spongy and was starting to collapse. Now, due to the location of the fire, firefighters had to initially enter the home through an escape window in the basement. There were no injuries to the occupants or any of the firefighters on the scene. Now, the Red Cross was on scene due to the displacement of the occupants. The case against Shauna Banda, a local medical marijuana advocate who is facing drug and child endangerment charges, took a turn last week after her attorney asked to withdraw from the case. Chief District Judge Wendell Wurst said Wednesday that he granted attorney Sarah Swain's motion to withdraw. Wurst said he received a call Friday from Swain who said Banda wanted a different lawyer. Now, the 38-year-old Banda is scheduled to be back in court on May 31st, well, she will provide the name of her new attorney. Swain declined to comment about the reason she is no longer Banda's attorney. And former Republican Governor Mike Hayden on Saturday called on current Governor Brownback to admit his tax policy had failed and said Republicans should be ashamed of the state's financial situation. John Carlin, the former Democratic governor, sought to rally support for Democrats and moderate Republicans in a joint appearance with Hayden as the two sought to answer the question, what the hell's wrong with Kansas? The title of their presentation. Now, the pair, who once sparred politically at the State House, united in opposition to what they see as the state's current worrying trajectory. Their critique of Kansas' current state of affairs was itself not particularly groundbreaking, but nevertheless striking given the men's past positions. Now, Hayden said every governor is entitled to put forward their own policies and even experiment, but that some experience, experiments are failures. And that's a look at some of the stuff that's happening around the area. Stick around. Be back with, yeah, it's going to be a little drier forecast, but still going to be cool into next week. Be right back after this. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. You want to 
feel connected, at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, when important things happen, we're here at all hours, in the moment, on every screen in your life. Your local TV and radio broadcasters, we investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 and here. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Lead paint poisoning affects one million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Local weather forecast for the High Plains. And welcome back. Hey, lots of clouds out there as we look off the TV 23 tower cam. And lots of cool out there. Cool and wet. Today, the role of Seattle, Washington will be played by Southwest Kansas. Because they rain. Anyway. Anyway, let's take a, re uh, let's take a look at the readings here at the station. It's only 49 degrees relative humidity, though. 91%. Winds are out of the northeast at 15 Barometric pressure on the rise. Now, as we look at the current temperatures around the viewing area, you can see everybody is in the upper 40s or lower 50s. Hayes be the hot spot at 55. Looking at our current dew points, you can see they're pretty, pretty close to our current temperatures. That's why our humidity is so high around the area. Looking at our wind speeds, though, everybody's having a little bit of wind today. Looks like Liberal and Elkhart are the least windy, but everybody is going to get up into the teens today. Looking at our highs and lows as recorded at the Garden City Regional Airport. Yesterday we did get up to 58 degrees. Far cry from 104 back in 1996. Overnight low yesterday morning 47. 34 the record back in 1983 and 2011. Now Garden City did have 31 hundredths in the bucket yesterday. I think we had about three quarters as far as south as liberal and a little more over in the Mead area. Looking at our forecast for today, those clouds are going to hang around. 55 for the high today. Winds are going to be out of the north, northeast at 17, sometimes gusting up close to 30. Then tonight, mostly cloudy, 42 for the low. Winds out of the east, northeast at 14. Tomorrow, warm up a little bit. Going to be mostly cloudy, a little bit of sunshine sneaking through. 63 or 62 for the high. Winds out of the east southeast at 13. And then there is a 20% chance of some precipitation tomorrow night. 20%, that's not bad. 46 for the overnight low, mostly cloudy. Winds are still going to be in the easterly direction, but they're going to switch around to the southeast. Looking at the seven day, though, you can see we do have some more rain rolling in on the weekend, but we get to the weekend, the temperatures are going to start to warm up. So that's nice. And that's a look at the weather. Stick around. I'll be back with the markets and Stacia after this. Life's a little different here in Southwest Kansas. We do things our own way with a can-do spirit and strong family values, which means we treat people right and we want the best value for our dollar. The same is true about United Wireless. We aren't like the national brands. We treat our customers like family. We provide excellent service and simple, easy to understand plans that will save you money. We are United Wireless and we are Southwest Kansas Proud. 
Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. it's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 110 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 600% increase in the last 20 years. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kbgltv.com. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. And welcome back. I'm now joined by Stacia Long. She is the Seward County Clerk as well as the head election official, right? <laughs> Are you not the head election official? I am the election you're official. The, you're the dog. Seward you're County. the top dog when it comes to there you go. <laughs> putting a little card in the machine. That's right. <laughs> All right. So you got a lot of stuff coming up. Yes. And it's getting here quick. It is getting it? here quick. Okay. Because the Just, biggest thing is, though, 
is June 1st at noon, mm -hmm. that is the filing deadline Correct. for any candidates, plus if you are a registered Democrat, Libertarian, Republican, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. that is the last day to change party Correct. affiliations, right? Correct. That seems odd. It is a new law, and it's new this year. I'm hoping that the state of Kansas will get some uh, public service announcements out to kind of help us get the word out, because yeah. I think that is going to be a little bit confusing. Um, I, I don't believe it was a problem on this side of the state, but I think closer to the other side of the state in the, big, in the bigger cities, people were changing their party after they would see who would file. And so this will not allow them to do that. That's true. I thought maybe that would, okay, so, all right, so that's going to eliminate a lot of that. So, yes. Because I, I don't ever remember that being kind of a problem out in this I don't part know that it has been here, um, but I believe that there were people actually changing their party from Democrat to Republican or Republican to Democrat to um, to vote to a sway way. vote yes, okay yes those cotton pickers <laughs> so. back east they ruin it for everybody <laughs> well i just know we haven't had that problem or i certainly well, I haven't think seen so, it because you've been doing this for so. a long time yeah a little while <laughs> just a day or two this yeah. is not your first election coming up no and okay new voter registration though if Correct. you are if you have not registered yet and you should that's right july 12th july 12th is the voter registration deadline okay yes. end of the day july 12th yes close of business on july 12th you've done your homework I, well i've been around you. i vote <laughs> usually i take all my my i voted stickers i get from you guys uh -huh. and they're all on my sun visor in my vehicle and my vehicle is just covered with i voted those stickers. are a pretty large commodity during election time um people don't usually want to leave it all without having their sticker i know so i don't need it i don't know why i mean i it's think just... they're important though when people are out in the public um i don't know how you can forget that we have an election but sometimes <laughs> it does slip people's mind and they'll see that sticker and say oh my goodness i've got to go vote that's so, true yeah that's and true. there's people that'll actually ask for two so really? that they can wear like basically because we start advance voting two weeks before the election oh, that's so right. they sure like to wear that yes. and then they'll save it for election day to also help people know and, and they're proud of that and they should be okay now, with the June 1st deadline, mm -hmm. now that is for all state and local offices? All offices, yes. Okay. Correct. June 1st. And at noon. anything that is like city, county, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. they do at their local Correct. clerk's office, Correct. right? But if you want to run for a state office or above, you file then at the state's At the state level. The Secretary of State's office. Okay. Yes. He kind of looks over so, that, huh? Yes. All right. Right? Mr. Kobach. There you go. Secretary Kobach. Correct. Okay. Now, with the advance, now let's talk about advance voting. Okay. Because I think there's a lot of people that don't understand advance voting. I, I will tell you that in my years in the office, it is getting to be uh, more popular for people to vote in advance. Uh, by law, the county clerk's offices have to start advance voting one week before the election. I like to start at least two weeks. In fact, I have done that for many years now, two weeks before the election. Um, it's a convenience thing. Uh, there's, you don't have to have an excuse to go in and vote in advance, and we do have a lot of people that take advantage of that. I do so, that. I do that a lot. Yeah. Because I drive by the, I drive by Stacia's office a lot because <laughs> it's on the street where my office is. Yeah, yeah. And you go by and they got that big banner yes. out. Vote. People appreciate that. Too, I do. And I, go, and I think oh, it, advanced We'd like to get more up. of those out in the communities just because it, I think it helps remind people during election time. Now, not only with the advance voting, though, of, you know, people can come to the clerk's mm -hmm. office, you have a little place set up, and you right. get your little cards and everything, and yep. go through the machine, which yep. has got to save you a lot. It's it's actually pretty wonderful, that system. And, and our voters love it, too, and I appreciate I do too. that. I so like it's it, yeah. Very you easy. Just put the card in and go mm -hmm. boop, 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 and mm -hmm. done. I think what is also nice in Southwest Kansas, we are also considered a bilingual county. Yes. Um, and it, the very first election that I had that was English and Spanish was a very long, lengthy ballot, and it was intimidating to the voters. And so having the touchscreen uh, systems allows a voter to choose whichever language they wish to, to use. And so they don't have to see both languages on the same ballot. Okay. Along with the advanced voting, mm -hmm. though, not only coming to your office and doing right. it, but you can do... Mail by you. mail, yes. Yeah. Okay. So how does that work? Any, I've never done that. You know, anyone can uh, request a ballot to be mailed to them. Uh, it is an application process. You can download it and fax it to my office or bring it in, and we would actually mail a ballot to a voter. We also have um, permanent advance voting, and this is a statewide um, program. But if if there's an individual that has a permanent disability, they can actually apply for an advance ballot by mail indefinitely so that every okay. election they'll just get a ballot mailed to them 
Um, but anybody can apply per election to have a ballot mailed to them. It's very popular with our college students. I was going to say, I would, I would imagine yes. a lot of college mm -hmm. students would want to do the yes, and then, mail um, ballot. People that are maybe snowbird, people that are yes. gone for the, for the season, um, they'll also have their ballot mail. So. Okay, so if you send me a mail-in a mail ballot, yes. and I get that, now is it due back? At a certain time? It, I'm that guessing is very there's a important. deadline. That is an excellent question. Um, it does have to be back in my hands, in the election off officials' hands, by close of polls on election day. Oh, okay. And, and I didn't so know that. we have throughout the day out at the activity center and at the city of Kismet where people will be bringing in ballots um, that were voted. Uh, and I will also tell you that we do receive ballots after, after the deadline. And that is a clear statute and a state law that it has to be received by the close of polls on election day. So if you get it after the close of polls, it, just it, boom? It's just, Do you yeah. even open? I mean, you no, don't even it open? cannot be opened. Just no, shred? Right. No, we don't shred it. We oh, will keep it and keep track of it. Oh, we okay. had it returned and whatnot. Um, right. It doesn't happen very often, and I have a really good story to tell. <laughs> um, a gentleman actually paid to overnight his ballot. Actually, I think it was maybe college student. They paid over $15 to have that ballot mailed or overnighted to our office, and it made it. Um, and we've also had... The That's post, some serious yeah, voting right that there. That is. Um, Good so, for you. Yes, but the, yeah, that is the, the deadline to have those back. All right, so then, okay, these mail-in ballots. And then do you open those after the polls close? Typically we will run, it, it depends on the election and how big it is, but I typically will have a board in the office that will do that on a daily basis. And then throughout the day, on election day, typically we'll do it until noon the day before. And then we're getting ready to, you know, as far as setting up and whatnot not, and doing poll books, and then I will have a board out at the activity center that will, will open them and run them through the counter. And we do have the one count, and so we don't run those until at the close of polls. Okay. So then, but and now here's the thing I don't think anybody, unless you've run or been elected, right. um, after the election, though, you guys have a process you go through also. I like to say that that's actually when the work begins. <laughs> it tends to, <laughs> election day is, is really kind of fun to work. Um, it's very busy. Uh, board workers love it. Uh, but afterwards, that's when uh, we really get down to the nitty-gritty of putting, making sure that the numbers, uh, doing the abstract, for instance. We also have what's called provisional ballots that we have to uh, investigate, literally each one. Um, there's multiple reasons why people might vote a provisional ballot. Um, for one, if they moved and didn't change their re voter registration, they would vote a provisional ballot. And um, if you know, it could be also that we have a, maybe a clerical error that maybe when we entered the voter registration, um, we entered it incorrectly, like maybe put the first name for the last name and they weren't able to find the voter in the poll book, um, then I can investigate that and present it to the Canvas board um, so that I can recommend if it be counted or not. Okay. So in that case, you let somebody go ahead and vote. Absolutely. Anybody that comes in, we give them the opportunity to Then you just kind of put that one over and, here. And there's reasons, and there's also statutory reasons. Um, sometimes, uh, and the main thing is if, if a person changes their address and they don't re-register, and if, if it's within 30 days of the election, they can go to their former precinct and vote. But if it's, at, if it's at, uh, longer than 30 days, then they have to get their correct ballot style. And that's because each precinct is, their, is its own ballot style. Um, so you, you're dealing with commission districts, and yes. so they could have moved from one district to another. Um, and so we want to make sure that they have the correct ballot and they're voting the correct ballot for the precinct that they live in. Or in, or in, or in some cases they have a school district that precinct because yeah, they, be they by mm -hmm, district and mm -hmm, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, so. so how big is your book to keep track of all this? Well, uh, we do, like this I will thick. tell you that we do have election standards that were adopted by the County Clerks and Election Officials Association as well as the state of Kansas, and they're constantly looking that, at that. So it's nice to have a little bit of guidance on some of the things, and most of it's statutory. And so you look at the law and you do what it says, basically. Right, black so, and white. Right. Okay. Most of it is. So... It sure helps. The important thing is, though, get out and get registered. That's exactly right. So you can get those Very cool I voted stickers. There you go. There okay. you go. Coming up June 1st, if you don't have a party affiliation, that deadline or candidate filing is at noon on June, June 1st. June 1st, yes. And July 12th, close of business, is the last day that you can register. Right. And if, they have, if you have any questions... No matter what Absolutely. county you're in, call your county clerk and say, I got an election question. Correct. That's probably the easiest thing to do, isn't yes. it? Yes. I do think something that uh, Warren's mentioning is if you wait until closer to the, the deadline to register, 
you do need to have your proof of citizenship or a document Ooh, yeah. that shows yeah, yeah, proof yeah. of citizenship in order for us to be able to put you in as an active registered voter. You just can't show up with your electric bill or anything? No, anymore, can you? not for a new registrant. Okay. So that right. is required in the state of Kansas. Aisha, you are a wealth of oh, information. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming Any by questions? today. Thank you. It was fun. Call your county clerk if you have election questions. There you go. All right. Thanks. Thank you. And stick around. I'll be back with some more after this. And welcome back. Hey, the Class 6A Regional Golf Tournament was held at Buffalo Dunes Golf Course yesterday. Garden City was paced by Taylor Larson, Sean Audrian, and Logan Durst. For the Buffaloes, the trio went 2, 3, and 4 to lead the Buffs to their second consecutive 6A Regional Championship, winning with a team score of 313, outpacing Hutch by 7, who came in at 320. Dodge City finished in a distant third, 20 strokes behind Garden City at 341. And the Liberal Redskins came out of a three-way tie for second with the number three seed heading into the Class A 5 5A regional playoffs. Liberal, who is 16 and 4, will travel to Great Bend tomorrow and face Mays at 2 p.m. Great Bend is the number two seed. They'll play Arc City. Winner of those two games will meet at 6 o'clock. And I guess we're about out of time. So go ahead, make it a great day. We'll see you next time. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL TV. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent? One in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 88. 
I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org.